Hi, my name is Vanessa van Dijk and in this video I'm going to show you a skincare routine using the ordinary products that's suitable for over 50. And so we're going to keep the focus towards hydration, skin repair, reducing fine lines and wrinkles and improving skin firmness and elasticity. And so as always I have prepared for you a PowerPoint which you can see right here and I want to go over the morning example skincare routine as well as my evening example skincare routines step by step. And in between I do want to emphasize a some of the general skincare tips which can make a huge difference when working with skincare products in general and sunscreen information. If you're going to scroll down even further you come across a skincare product descriptions and this is primarily for you so that you understand what products that I have picked for whom they are suitable and what they can do for you when using them. Now overall the entire PowerPoint is for you so that you know how you can properly use the products and what products I can recommend if you have those specific skin concerns because overall it's a great anti-aging skincare routine. So if you want to go over the different slides in your own time you will find a specific link in the description box down below and you can even save the PowerPoint to your device if you want to recreate the skincare routine. So let's get started with a morning example skincare routine which you can see right here. So in the top corner you can see the time of use, in the middle that it's a daily skincare routine that you can do in the morning, below that the steps underneath the products that I have picked and below the boxes you can see an overall general guide of how much you need to use, specifically when it comes to the zones. Now this guide can be slightly adjusted. If you feel like it's not enough, add a few drops more. If you feel like it's too much, reduce it. However, overall I recommend not overdoing it. Otherwise you may come across layering issues and you may create skin sensitivity because the skin is too overwhelmed with what you just have applied based on the amount of product. So overall I recommend getting started with a general guide and then if you should feel the need you can adjust it. So we are going to get started with the first step which is washing your face using a regular cleanser or just wash your face with water. Nonetheless when using water my recommendation is using lukewarm water so it feels comfortable on the skin, it's not too hot nor too cold. Now in the morning you can say that the cleansing step is an optional step because if water alone is enough for you then that's completely fine, therefore I recommend testing it and see what works the best for you. Once you have washed your face, you have rinsed it off, you're going to pat the skin dry. This refers to removing the remaining water drops from the skin surface. I do have a specific guide for you under general skincare tips, which you can see right here. So you're going to take a clean towel, gently pat all over, please do not drop. And this can already improve how the leave-on skincare products that will follow afterwards will layer on the skin surface so that you won't come across an uncomfortable feeling nor coming across skincare pills then the likelihood of experiencing this is already dramatically reduced. And I do have some skincare tips right here about peeling and I've mentioned just the first one which now plays a big role when washing your face with either water or a cleanser. And you can go ahead and read this in your own time but pretty much peeling is extremely annoying and you're basically rubbing off the skincare product that you just have applied and it looks like your skin is going to peel off but it's not your skin, it's the skincare product. And you, then you can basically start Start all over again. This is how annoying it is because you cannot properly get it off the skin. So therefore this little step in between is extremely important before you're going to move on with the rest of your skincare routine. Now once you're done with your cleansing step, you're going to move on to your leave-on products. Now the first one would be water-based serums. The Ordinary Marine Hyaluronics helps for long-lasting hydration. The Ordinary Amino Acids Plus B5 is a great serum for skin repair because that's what we have naturally in the skin and if the skin is damaged or as we age this can reduce, so therefore if you want to strengthen your skin barrier you can go with Ordinary Amino Acids. Now with the little stars that you can see in front of it, this refers to my general guide below so go ahead and check how much you do then would need to use when applying it to the skin. You can go with either one of them or with both because I did not overdo the morning skincare routine so theoretically it can work with those three little bottles. That's actually what's recommended using no more than three little like serum formulations and overall this can work well. However, depending on the overall formulation, um, like reducing it to one or two is sometimes best because then you're going, like, going to avoid an uncomfortable feeling. But with those serums, this shouldn't be an issue at all. So you can go with either one of them or both. 
nonetheless apply it to the skin and then leave it on the skin there's no need to wash it off now in between the waiting time is important so once you have applied it all over you're going to uh, give it a moment so it can fully absorb into the skin for that i do have a specific guide right here as well so the waiting time in between the applications is important so that the serum has enough time to fully absorb into the skin before applying the next serum on top of it this again will help you with the layering in general and that you won't come across skincare pilling. So once you have applied to your zone, you can move on to the next zone, which would be the ordinary pigmental 5%. This is a great antioxidant. It helps with fighting free radicals, skin hydration, and skin elasticity. So it has its anti-aging benefits as well. So I think, yeah, it's a great zone that you can include in your morning skincare routine. And because it is an anhydrous solution, which basically means that it's a formulation without water, you would use it after your water-based zones. And again, with a two star, you can see the general guide below. Once you have applied it to the skin, you're going to leave it on the skin. There's no need to wash it off. Now the waiting time here in between changes just a tiny bit because the anhydrous solution usually takes a bit longer to absorb into the skin. However, again, as soon as it has absorbed into the skin, you can immediately move on to the next step. And then the last step is going to be your sunscreen. Now you may notice I did not pick the ordinary sunscreen primarily because it leaves a terrible white cast. So I wouldn't recommend it. But nonetheless, if you like it, or if you like to use another sunscreen that you truly like use yourself, then go ahead and then basically replace it with the examples that I have right here. Nonetheless, the examples that you can see right here with Nude Survivor 30, which is a mineral sunscreen, or Cosorex Aloe Soothing Sunscreen, which is a mixture of mineral and chemical. Those are sunscreens that I use myself and that I can recommend. Using sunscreen during the, during the day to protect your skin from the damaging UV rays if you have sun exposure is extremely important because you're already dealing with fine lines and wrinkles so you want to improve them and not make them worse. So this would be the first factor. Second factor is if you have sun damaged skin, again with the products that I've included in the skincare routine, you can improve it and so therefore again you do not want to make it worse. Same would apply to getting a sunburn, overall skin cancer and if you just want to protect your skin in general. So for that I do have a specific sunscreen guide as well which you can find on the sunscreen information and you can go ahead and read it in your own time right here. I, I do have two slides for you about that information but overall I do have an application guide for you as well which would be then apply your sunscreen 10 to 15 minutes before sun exposure. For your face, neck and ears use about half a teaspoon. If you're going to include your decolletage then use about one teaspoon. Now this guide can be slightly adjusted if it shouldn't feel comfortable or if you're ending up with too much product. But overall you should get the idea that you need to use a fair amount to evenly cover and protect your skin if you have sun exposure. If you want to see a detailed application video about the sunscreen I have it for you in the top right corner. And so then this would be the entire morning skincare routine which you can use daily and then this would be the order of application. Now let's get started with the first evening skincare routine where you can see we're working with exfoliating acids. And so what's primarily important with this routine right here is first of all the frequency. As you can see on the top it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This would be the frequency guide on how often you're going to use glycolic acid or lactic acid. But overall the major steps would be your cleansing step and then getting into the details of the exfoliant. This is primarily where I want to keep my focus on. So when it comes to the cleansing step, you can wash your face with an oil or balm cleanser or a regular cleanser. I do have the general guide for you as well right here below on how you would use the different cleansers. Now you can go ahead and use your regular cleanser if you just have worn light makeup and or and maybe a chemical sunscreen because usually they come off pretty well by just using a regular cleanser. However, if you should have used a mineral sunscreen and maybe heavy makeup or pigmented or waterproof makeup, well then it's best to work with an oil or balm cleanser. Now they can be used individually, so either use your oil or balm cleanser or your regular cleanser depending on what you have worn throughout the day. 
or what you can also do would be a double cleanse. And so for that, I have a specific guide for you again on the sunscreen information. When it comes to how you can properly remove your sunscreen, here you can see the overall general guide. So it's completely fine to use the cleansers individually. However, if you feel like your oil or balm cleanser leaves a weird residue afterwards, then you may want to do a double cleanse. But using a washcloth in between can already make a huge difference on how you can properly wash your face. So if you want to see a guide on how you can properly remove your sunscreen, I have a video for you in the top right corner. So this would be then the first and important step when it comes to your evening skincare routine. Again, after that, you're going to pat the skin dry. So again, removing the remaining water drops on the skin surface. Then you're going to head into your exfoliant. Now I've picked the Ordinary Glycolic Acid Toning Solution or the Ordinary Lactic Acid. If you're being completely new to an exfoliant in general, you aren't sure how your skin is going to respond to it. I recommend starting off with lactic acid. This is usually much gentler and better tolerated. Um, however, if you have already previous experience or you have already used lactic acid, then you then may want to move on to glycolic acid if you want to try out something new. Basically, glycolic acid has smaller molecules therefore it absorbs faster into the skin but the downturn may be that it's going to cause uh, like more stinging and burning compared to lactic acid so that's like the biggest difference and when it comes to what it does to the skin well it's an exfoliant so it helps to loosen the dead skin cells on the skin surface which if you have some damaged skin overall like dead skin cells build up your fine lines and wrinkles can look more obvious so if you're getting into a habit and using your exfoliant every now and then this can help you to shed off the dead skin cells and therefore your fine lines and wrinkles can already be much more reduced when it comes to the appearance from the outside now on the other hand glycolic acid and lactic acid it have the hydration benefits as well so if your skin is well hydrated again your skin will look much plumber in that specific sense so again it can give you a reduction of fine lines and wrinkles and it's a great way especially if you have some damaged skin now overall you have the general guide below on how you can work with your water-based exfoliant underneath you have the frequency as well which would apply to what I've mentioned like on the top Monday Wednesday and Friday and because I came up with two evenings example skincare routines I recommend like sticking to that specific guide and I will tell you in a moment why but there's one important point that I do want to emphasize when working with your exfoliant and this would be again under the general skincare tips when it comes to a damp skin. So here I just briefly explain what damp skin is by again removing the water drops from the skin surface since your skin has already absorbed some water while you were washing your face. And so the benefits of damp skin can be that the following skincare products will absorb much faster into the skin, giving you like so to say um, like a, a much like higher likelihood that they're going to do something in, like in your skin. However, if you should have a more sensitive skin or you're being completely new to, for example, retinols, retinoids or exfoliating acids as the one that I've mentioned in my example routine and you aren't sure if you're going to tolerate it when applying it to damp skin, you can go ahead and wait a 10 to 15 minutes for the skin to dry to some extent so that when applying your exfoliating acid to the skin that they're going to absorb much slower into the skin and therefore you can already reduce the likelihood of experiencing stinging or burning. Whereas with damp skin, when applying it immediately after you have washed your face, this may be like a more likelihood of a risk. And so therefore you can go ahead and adjust it. This is very individual, but you know how you can deal with it and how you could reduce the likelihood of experiencing sensitivity. Nonetheless, this is a leave-on exfoliant, so once you have applied it to the skin, you're going to leave it on the skin, there's no need to wash it off. Then again, give it a moment so it can fully absorb into the skin, and then I recommend moving on to hydration, which would be then the Ordinary Marine Hyaluronics. Uh, apply it to the skin, leave it on the skin, there's no need to wash it off. Now, I did not include the Ordinary Amino Acids because after that specific step, we are using a moisturizer that already contains natural moisturizing factors, such as the one from the Ordinary or the hydration vaccine. Both of them are great examples that help to strengthen and rebuild the skin barrier. Because natural moisturizing factors is something that we have naturally in the skin, and this includes the amino acids as well. Therefore, I left out the Ordinary Amino Acids and I went with the moisturizer 
moisturizer instead that you can use as the last step in your evening skincare routine. Use about a, like a pea size to a bean size amount and apply it evenly all over. So as I already mentioned earlier with the natural moisturizing factors, if your skin is damaged, it can be reduced. As we age, this can be reduced. So if you want to rebuild it, using such a moisturizer is important. And so then this would be the last step. And this is a routine that you're only going to do three times per week. So keep this in mind. On the other days, when it comes to my next example, this would be then on all the other days um, when not using your leave-on exfoliant. And so again, we have the cleansing step, which I already covered. Then at first we are going to use marine hyaluronics for hydration. And then you can move on to either the Ordinary Buffet Plus Copper Peptides 1% or the Ordinary Granactive Retinoid in Emulsion. Now Buffet Plus Copper Peptides helps with skin elasticity and firmness and to some extent gives benefits to um, like hydration as well. So this could be one example, it's a peptide serum. However, if you do not really want to work with a peptide serum, well, another option would be uh, a retinol or active retinoid from the ordinary line. I picked my favorite one based on how it feels on the skin because the ones in square lane can feel quite oily but of course if you have for example a drier skin type you may enjoy the retinols or active retinoids in square lane so you could go ahead and exchange it. Just if you're being completely new to it, start with the lowest percentage and move your way up if you should feel the need. Now, I do not recommend using both in the same routine as they to some extent work in a similar way with this, like, like uh, giving you a faster cell turnover so that the skin is going to renew itself faster, basically. Um, so therefore, I recommend just going with either one of them, either with a peptide one or with a granactive retinoid or retinol. But nonetheless, below that, you can see the overall general guide of how you would use it. And so you may already be familiar with retinols, where granactive retinoid works in a similar way by reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. So once you have applied to the skin, you're going to leave it on the skin. There's no need to wash it off. Give it a moment to absorb into the skin. And then again, follow on with your moisturizer that contains natural moisturizing factors. Now you can see right here on the top that I did mention that you can use this routine on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now this can be completely fine. However, in general, if you feel like your skin needs a break of all the skincare products, this is completely fine. If you want to do this just for one moment, or if you just want to do this like once a week. And my suggestion would be to give your skin a break where you would use nothing at all other than washing your face and your sunscreen during daytime would give your skin a break on Sunday, for example, so that you're having three days of exfoliating acids, three days where you're using your granactive retinoid, retinol or your peptide serum, and then one day where you're just going to keep it as simple as possible so that your skin has the time to adjust not only to the skincare product, but to have like a break in between as well, because it can to some extent be quite overwhelming. And so over Overall, this would be then the second evening skincare routine so that you then understand that you can uh, basically alternate between the first one to the second one so that you have every day a different evening skincare routine and once a week a break. And so again, I do want to emphasize that under the general skincare tips, you will find more information, not only about the patch test, but the points that I've already mentioned in between with washing the face, damp skin, waiting time, and as well as choosing the products that are designed for your skin concerns, which I've mentioned already earlier based on the skin concerns, then this would be a routine that could be a great fit for you. However, you have to be realistic when it comes to over-the-counter products. They can help you with certain skin concerns to some extent. However, depending on how severe your fine lines and wrinkles may be, your sun-damaged skin may be, or you may have other skin concerns, then I highly recommend seeking a professional like a dermatologist who can look at your skin and then gives you the right treatment or the right therapy depending on your overall skin concerns to work on it to improve it. And overall, as a last great ending point, it's always important to take good care of your skin and be patient and consistent with your skincare routine. Keep in mind, this won't happen overnight, so you have to use those products for at least a few months to see some significant like changes within your skin. And so this is what I primarily want to share with you when it comes to the ordinary skin routine for over 50. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you find the PowerPoints helpful, if you 
enjoyed this video, if you enjoy my work that I'm including in my videos. I am an independent YouTuber, I have an independent channel and so if you want to support my work you can go ahead and do this by checking the super thanks button below this video or even in the description box you will find a PayPal link. But nonetheless if you want to do this in a free way you can go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up as well as share it with your friends and family so that this video gets attention and that you can learn more about skincare in general. Now if you want to now learn more about the different applications I'm going to leave some of the videos at the end of this video so that you can keep on watching. Thank you so much for watching and I will thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.